Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today in this episode of VIT Triple E Questions with Solution, we're going to be looking at some questions which were asked in physics in previous years of VIT Triple E. So this will be helpful for your preparation for the exam which is scheduled in 2021. So today we're talking physics and especially the chapter electrostatics. So this talks about static electricity such as, you know, electric charges in fields and electrostatic potential and capacitance. So we're going to talk electricity today and in accordance with our suggestions from our viewers, we've decided to limit it to that subject only and make some questions regarding those. So today this is our first question. A metallic sphere is placed in a uniform electric field. The line of force follows following the path shown in the figure R. So we have four possible paths here. We need to find out which of these is correct. So we have one path that goes, you know, to the side of that ball without touching it. And here is it number two, which winds around the ball and then continues on its original trajectory. Number three is passing through the ball. It's passing through the sphere. And number four, it is starting and stops at the surface of the sphere. And then it comes out and then moves in the original direction it was meant through. So if you are confused about one and three, three passes through the sphere and one is beside the sphere. So which of these four paths is the correct one? Well, for that you need to understand electric field lines themselves and number and an important point that you should note is that field lines, especially electric field lines, do not pass through the sphere. So you can basically remove option three from here. So three is incorrect because it passes through the sphere, whereas we can do it for normal electric field lines. Another important point that we should note is that the electric field lines are perpendicular to the surface charge as they near the surface. So if this metallic sphere was charged, then the field lines would become parallel to the sphere, sp sphere surface before touching it and then resuming their, you know, propagation from the other side. So in option two, you can see that it's not exactly perpendicular because then it winds around the ball and then moves. So that is incorrect. And option one is also, uh, option one also occurs, but it, but it isn't the worst case scenario. So even though some of the electric field passes to the side of it, the electric field lines do not get deflected by the ball. So therefore option one is also incorrect. The right answer is option four. So in the fourth electric field line, you can see that the field line starts out in the vertical direction. And then because of the sphere, it moves to touch the sphere at the, at a perpendicular direction. And then since the electric field lines cannot go propagate through the, uh, and since the electric field lines cannot propagate through the sphere, inside the sphere, so then it moves along the periphery and then it, it exits perpendicularly as well and then moves on in the original direction. So option D is the most appropriate option among the four. We have another question here. The equivalent capacitance between A and B for the combination of capacitors shown in the figure where all capacitances are in microfarad is. Is it 6, 4, 2, or 3 microfarad? Well, for starters, we can start naming our capacitors so that we can, you know, make transformations to the circuit. So this is circuit A. I mean, it's capacitor A. This is B. With The one with 3 microfarads is C. The one with six microfarads is D. The one with two microfarads is E. And the one with eight microfarads is F. So between A and B, you have this circuit. 
Now, how do we solve questions when you have a, a range of capacitances present in a circuit? Well, we have two methodologies. The one is to relate, one is to relate the capacitors which are present in series. So this is kind of like the resistances in series and resistances in parallel. But for capacitors, if they are in series, then 1 by C effective will be equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus so on. <clears throat> and for capacitors in parallel, parallel capacitors can be added directly. Their capacitances can be added directly to form to find out the effect of capacitance. So now that we know both of these ideas, let's start solving this question. We should first find out which of these capacitances are in parallel and which are in series. So first up, you can see that BC as well, capacitors B and C as well as capacitors D and E are in parallel. So therefore, we can write BC are in parallel. And then you have DE also in parallel. So the capacitance, the effective capacitance from both these capacitors, which we write as CBC, will be equal to the capacitance of B plus the capacitance of C, which in this case is 1.0 microfarad plus 3.0 microfarad. So therefore, you will get a total of 4.0 microfarad. For the capacitors D and E, the equivalent capacitance CDE is equal to the capacitance of D plus the capacitance of E. And capacitance of D is, you know, 6 microfarads, 6.0 6 .0 microfarad. And for the capacitor E, it is 2.0 microfarad. So therefore, the, equip the effective capacitance will now be 8 microfarad across the parallel capacitors D and E. Now we have reduced these to one capacitor. We will now attempt to, you know, relate A as well as BC in series and we'll relate DE and F in series. So capacitors A and BC are in series. Similarly, capacitors DE and F are in series. So now 1 by capacitance of ABC will be 1 by capacitance of A plus 1 by capacitance of BC. So that is <clears throat> 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4. Which will be equal to 2 by 4.0. So therefore, when you take the inverse <clears throat> of this fraction, so that is basically C capacitance of ABC. Capacitance of ABC will be 4.0 divided by 2, which is 2.0 microfarad. Similarly, you have capacitors D, E, and F, which are in series. So 1 by capacitance of D, E, F will be equal to 1 by capacitance of D, E plus 1 by capacitance of F. So D, E together will give you 8 microfarad and F also is 8 microfarad. So therefore you have 1 by 8.0 plus 1 by 8.0 which is equal to 2 by 8.0. So the capacitance across, so the capacitance of the combination DEF is equal to 8.0 microfarads divided by 2 which is 4.0 microfarads. So now that we know the capacitances across both arms of the circuit joining A and B. We can now take both those arms as parallel since they are connected to the same two points and then we can use the parallel principle. So capacitances ABC and capacitance DEF are in parallel. So the effective capacitance will be capacitance of ABC plus capacitance of DEF, 
which in this case is, you know, 2.0 microfarads plus 4.0 microfarads, and that is equal to 6.0 microfarads. So the effective capacitance across the circuit is option A, 6.0 microfarads. So the best thing to do here is to find out which of these circuits capacitors are in parallel and which are in series and then reduce them accordingly. Start from the smallest and then work your way up to reducing the entire capacitor, the entire set of capacitors into one giant capacitor and the with the equivalent capacitance of the entire network. So option A is the correct option for this question which was asked in 2018 for electrostatics. Now we have the final question of this episode. Four point charges minus Q, minus capital, minus uppercase Q, minus lowercase Q, two lowercase Q, and two uppercase Q are placed one at each corner of the square. The relation between uppercase Q and lowercase Q for which the potential at the center of the square is zero is Q equals minus lowercase Q, Q equals minus one by lowercase Q, Q equals lowercase q, q equals 1 by lowercase q. Well, let's first draw the situation. So basically, we will have a square, and then both of their diagonals are connected, and the center point is point O. The corners will have charges minus q, minus lowercase q, to lowercase q and to q. And what we do know is that this shape is a square, so all the sides are equal. So we can assume the side of the square being of dimensions a length. So let a be the side length of the square. So if we know the sides, then using the Pythagoras theorem, a square plus a square, so that's two under root of two a square, gives you the value of the diagonal. So diagonal of the square will have length a root two. And then from there, you can write that the distance between O and any vertex will actually be equal to A root 2 divided by 2 because it's present at the center, which we can further simplify as A by root 2. So now we know the distance between the, verti the vertices and the center O. We also know the charges at each, each vertex. So now we can calculate the potential. So, potential at center O. The formula V is equal to the constant, the electrostatic constant, times the charge, which for the first vertex is minus Q, divided by the distance between the two points, so that's A by root 2. So it's basically the distance between the desired point and the point where the charge is present. So for the first vertex, it's k times minus q divided by a by root 2. We'll just add all the others using the principle of superposition. So for the second vertex, it's k times minus q divided by a by root 2. Then we move on down below, so you get k times 2q divided by a by root 2. And then finally, you have a k times 2 lowercase q divided by a by root 2. Now, the important point here is that in the question, it's given the potential at the center of the square is zero. So the value of this sum is actually equal to zero. Now in this sum, you can see that k and a by root two are common across all terms. So we'll take k divided by a by root two outside. So you'll get minus q minus lowercase q plus 2q plus 2 lowercase q. And that is equal to zero. 
So we can take k, k divided by a by root 2 to the left hand side and 0 multiplied by that will 0 divided by k by a by a by root 2 will still be 0. So therefore you'll have you have minus q. We'll take the terms with the same variable together. So minus q plus 2q minus lowercase q plus 2 times lowercase q and that is equal to 0. So 2q minus q is q. 2 lowercase q minus lowercase q, that is also equal to q. So plus q. So q plus lowercase q equals 0. So the relation that we will get is q equals minus of lowercase q. So this is the correct relation between the charges q and lowercase q. The correct answer is that option A, q is equal to minus of lowercase q. All other options are incorrect because they're not, because we used, first of all, what we did is we found out the distance between the center of the square and the vertices. And after that, we used the formula V is equal to KQ by R. And we used the principle of superposition in order to find out the total potential based on all the four vertices. And we use the part of the question which states that the potential at the center is zero. And once we did that, it was easy sailing. We just have to use you know, arithmetic operators in order to get the relation between Q and lowercase Q, which is option A, Q equals minus lowercase Q. So that concludes this episode. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, which is Brain Blitz Audios. If you wanted to see more content to your liking, then you can always post your views in the comment section down below. If you want to ac if you want to access the playlist for VIT Triple E, then you can always hit the playlist which is present in the description box below. If you want to, you know, get updates about our latest content, for example the latest episode from VIT Triple E, then you can always hit the notifications button which is present below the video. So until the next webisode Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.